Welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Nina and I'm a life coach that specializes in personal development. I have been moving and traveling, so I am so excited to finally be back to the channel and back to helping us live our best life and find our inner awesome. So as you know, we spend a lot of time on this channel talking about our well-being. For the most part, we talk about our emotional well-being. But our emotional well-being is really only one factor in our wellness as a whole. So sometimes, you know, we start to feel like we're not having our best day or we get into a period of our lives where we're, you know, not feeling our best. We're not exactly sure what is wrong. We really can't pinpoint it. So there's a strategy that we can use to really evaluate all the different areas of wellness in our life. And that is called the eight dimensions of wellness, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So these eight dimensions of wellness were first determined by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Association. So they really came up with these eight factors that determine our wellness as a whole. So we're going to look at all these factors today and it's a great idea to every once in a while just go through each aspect and see how we are doing. Optimum wellness is really contingent on the intentional cohesiveness of all these elements of wellness. It's natural that we have a bias towards thinking about or focusing on certain aspects of our well-being. For example, I really tend to focus on my emotional well-being as, you know, the biggest factor. So I'm constantly going back to that. And there are other aspects of my well-being that I have to really be conscious about, you know, remembering to be aware of, or they simply get forgotten. So that's maybe something that you will find for yourself as well, which is why having these specific eight points is very helpful to really staying in line and on top of our emotional well-being and our wellness as a whole. So let's go ahead and talk about all of the different eight dimensions. So the first one, of course, is that emotional well-being, which again, I tend to really focus on myself and I think a lot of people do. And the best way to focus on our emotional well-being, in my opinion, is to really be consistent about keeping a self-growth journal or a self-development journal. And if you don't know how to do that, or if you've never had one before, I'm going to go ahead and link down below a video on how to specifically do that. It's very, very simple, and it really just helps us keep track of all the things that we're thinking and feeling and what may be bothering us. So it is a wonderful tool to have. Emotional wellness has a lot to do with not only keeping track of our feelings, but also really expressing ourselves and making sure that we have a positive outlook in life and making sure that, you know, we are feeling well, we're feeling good, we're feeling positive about life as a whole. You know, we're looking out for things like excessive stress, depression, anxiety. Anxiety is a big one. So we just want to, you know, constantly check in with this one because it has an enormous impact on how we are feeling day to day. Another tip that I tend to share in almost every video is meditation. And I feel that meditation really helps us bring our focus to our emotional well-being to really check in on sometimes what we are thinking and feeling subconsciously that don't tend to come out without true introspection and without really quieting our surroundings and quieting ourselves and really giving it proper analysis and thought. Now, the second degree of well-being is our financial well-being, and this one is often overlooked because it's not really associated that often with well-being as a whole, but it is very, very important. Now, I think a lot of the reason why we don't give it the focus that it deserves is because we often have a lot of limiting beliefs that revolve around money and finances as a whole. I know certainly I did. I really associated money money with greed, which is not the case at all. If we think about our finances in a very healthy way, we are thinking about our finances being integral to having a lot of security and support in our life, you know, something to fall back on. It offers us just a general safety net for when things aren't going as well in our life. 
So it is very important that we really consider our finances and make sure we are really, you know, in a healthy standpoint with them. We want to make sure that we are saving money where we can, that we are being financially responsible, and that if needed, we are looking for different ways to add income to our life if that is appropriate and necessary at that time. On the flip side, we want to make sure that we are not focusing on our finances to an unhealthy amount. So we don't want that to be the primary focus of our life. Of course, we don't want to be constantly thinking about money, but we do want to be, you know, enjoying the freedom and the security that finances that are healthy can really provide for us. So if that's not something we, you know, like to think about, you know, we really want to change our attitude towards thinking about money and finances so we can do what we can to put ourselves at ease and get ourselves in the best financial state possible for leading the life that we personally want to live. The next dimension of well-being is our spiritual well-being. Now that really covers a grand scope of ideas. So it is our connection to ourself, our connection to others, our connection to nature or the earth, and certainly our connection to a higher power if that is something that we personally believe in. But it's all the things that are outside of our own self. That is what we want to be considering when we are thinking about our spiritual well-being. Now, of course, religion can play a big part of this if you are a religious person, but if you are not a religious person, spirituality is just as important because we want to think about our place in the universe, that we are really contributing, that we are offering our best self from day to day, that we are living a life that is true to our values and our own belief system, that we are feeling that there is meaning behind what we are doing. So these are the things that we need to really check in on when we are considering the spiritual well-being. We don't want to kind of brush it under the rug because we have, you know, the same practices or the same rituals that we do day to day. We really want to be evaluating what is working for us and what could bring more meaning and purpose into our life. I also personally believe the more we remain open to the magic and mystery in life, the more we're going to have that sense of wonder and joy and that curiosity about life. So all these things really come into play in making sure that our spiritual health is healthy and strong. The next dimension of wellness is our occupational wellness. Now, oftentimes when we're talking about the eight dimensions of wellness, they actually make it the seven dimensions of wellness and it's occupational wellness that they leave out. Now, I think that really does a disservice, which is why I definitely wanted to include it today, but I'm going to give the little disclaimer that by occupational wellness, it does not have to mean that it is your nine to five job. That is kind of our role as a person. So it it could be our occupation, but it could be also our role as a parent or a student or include things like our hobbies or external activities. But we want to make sure when we're thinking about this occupational wellness that we are really feeling that we are serving our purpose in this lifetime, that we are offering to this world our gifts and our talents that's going to help us feel that we are really leading a worthwhile existence. So it's something to definitely consider. So a lot of times it's not getting the job that makes the most money. Sometimes it is about, you know, really fulfilling our heart's desire and, you know, finding financial security elsewhere. So we really want to make sure that we are being true to ourselves and that we are offering to this world what we can. So when we're thinking about our occupational wellness, this also includes thinking about our actual job if we have one and what steps we can take to make it the best possible experience that we could make it. If we are feeling that maybe our job is not the best right now, that we're not that satisfied in it, what steps can we take to make it a more pleasant experience? Can we, you know, learn something new at our job? Can we switch out who we're talking to if we're around a lot of negative people? Could we be, you know, spending more time in different aspects of our jobs? What things can we do to make our job, you know, from minute to minute and day to day as good as it possibly can be? 
and if it's something that we feel that ultimately we really don't want to be in this job. Really taking steps in thinking about how we can come up with an exit strategy. I'm going to go ahead and link down below one more video for you and that is what to do if we really are just so unhappy in our job. So it's going to talk about the steps we can take personally to make it a little better for us and then help us to come up with that exit strategy if we really feel that it is necessary. So kind of going hand in hand with that, our next dimension of wellness is our environmental wellness. Now that really covers a whole lot of different things. So that could be our social or professional environment. It could mean our built environment, which means kind of, you know, where we live and also our natural environment. So what we want to do here is look at all our different surroundings and make sure they are really aiding us to our, you know, best physical and mental health. So for example, if we're talking about our built environment, we want to make sure, for example, that our room is clean, that our bed is made, that the blinds are open, just taking simple steps of, you know, creating a peaceful, inspiring environment. You know, a lot of times we feel that when we have all this clutter around us, it really clutters ourselves mentally. So I think there is a very large correlation between our clutter and our level of peace and calm in our lives life and you know as my life goes on I'm finding that to be more and more true so you know just taking those simple steps you know to create that wonderful clean inspiring environment is so helpful to our health also getting out in nature is so important it is something that we oftentimes overlook especially in our culture but you know we look at the different cultures around the world and i think they have a better awareness on just how important you know nature is and being in natural surroundings and so it is part of my own personal daily routine to get outside even if it's for the shortest amount of time but i try to you know go on a walk or something every single day and you know if possible go outside and just really look at the stars i think that the more we can get in places in nature that really showcase how vast nature is and how big this universe is it reminds us how small so many of the things that we are focusing on are i'm not saying we don't have valid problems in our life of course we do we have things that can be negative or can you know require a lot of focus but you know getting out in front of a pink ocean or you know a mountain or again the stars really reminds us that we are, you know, we are small. We are one aspect of a huge universe and it really helps keep things in perspective. So I feel that nature is, you know, just such an essential part of our well-being. So it's definitely not something to be ignored and also go on vacations. I personally did not allow myself to go on vacations because I was a workaholic for so long. And, you know, once I changed that in my life, you know, just added so much happiness and joy and again, inspiration. So it's something to think about. And then going to our occupational or professional well-being in terms of our environment, we want to make sure that again, like our occupational well-being, that we are taking the steps necessary to make it as pleasant as possible, which means, you know, if we are working at a desk, we want to keep that desk, you know, neat and tidy or, you know, have pictures of families or loved ones in that space and make sure we are taking breaks as much as possible so we are you know letting our eyes see something new we are if we are allowed to going out somewhere else for lunch hopefully somewhere you know where you can see the sun shining but we are offering ourselves just you know the most peaceful pleasant inspiring spaces that we can have and that is really going to play a huge part in our environmental well-being now the next aspect of our well-being is our physical well-being and this is something probably the most obvious one however we hear it so much that we tend to tune it out so by this physical well-being i'm really just talking about our diet our exercise and our sleep and making sure that we are really taking great care in all of those three areas 
This is something that is extremely obvious, so I find that it tends to be something that people just do or they completely ignore or they ignore certain aspects of it. And I am definitely guilty of that. I love to exercise, but I still struggle with my sleep and my diet. I've recently tried to get a lot better about my diet, so you know, please hold me accountable as much as possible and check in on me because I really need to work on it but it's something we really need to take care of, all three of those areas. So we wanna make sure that we are offering ourselves the self-love and self-care that we would offer to other people that we were taking care of. For example, let's say we had to take care of a toddler. We would certainly not let them just eat junk food, not let them stretch their legs and not take a nap because they would be miserable and the whole world would know how miserable they were. Yet as adults, we oftentimes really are creative about trying Trying to disguise how miserable we are feeling because we are not taking proper care of ourselves. So it is, you know, just so fundamental, but it is something that we need to give it the focus it deserves, or there is nothing we can do to really totally feel well. It really erases the other seven dimensions of well being when we're not taking care of our physical well being, because how good can we feel when our body is not running properly? Properly. So we just want to make sure that we keep on top of that. The next dimension of well-being is our intellectual well-being and oh my goodness this one is so important. When we are intellectually starving, we are really robbing ourselves from living our best life. We need to be life long learners that is going to keep us interested and excited about life and you know there's the expression that if we are not growing we are dying we need to be growing all the time we need to stay you know so inspired by life and there's so many things that we can learn it's not like when we become an adult we just know everything or that we get to a level of self-development and we can just you know put it all on a shelf you know we're done we are you know evolving as a person every single day of our life so we need to be actively actively you know really cultivating that and for me the thing that has helped me the most with that is being an avid reader you know no matter how busy my life gets I make sure to fit that reading in it's something that I feel that is food for my mind and I absolutely love it. Now I know not everybody shares that love for reading so if that is the case for you um, or if you feel like you just simply can't shuffle things around to make the time to read then I always suggest audiobooks. You know the best time to you know listen to an audiobook I think is when you are driving because you have that big chunk of time or when you're working out because when you're working out it kind of you know helps the time go by quicker and you know you get that intellectual stimulation and if you don't like audiobooks you know there's also TED talks and podcasts and you know all different resources for helping you learn you can also enroll in a class if you feel like you need that structured environment but you just want to make sure that you are always expanding your mind as long as you live I also think about creativity as a huge part of our intellect. I almost wish that it is a separate dimension of wellness, but since it's kind of under the intellectual you know, umbrella for our dimensions of wellness, it's something that shouldn't be ignored. So really, again, giving attention to our creativity by you know, maybe drawing or painting or learning an instrument or singing or crocheting or whatever floats your boat, but you know, having that stimulation of our creativity and being able to express our creativity is just going to add one more layer to that optimum wellness in our life. Now, the last dimension of well-being is our social well-being, and this is a huge one. This one has to do with our relationships, our relationships with our family, with our spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend if we have one, our relationship with our friends, and certainly our relationships with our coworkers and other people that we need to deal with on a daily basis. It has to do with also making sure we feel that we have a sense of belonging where we are at. We also want to make sure that we are really cultivating only relationships that are 
positive for us, that we are really surrounding ourselves with people that are uplifting and supportive and that really, you know, have a great meaning in our life. Because if we are surrounding ourselves with negative people, we're really soaking in that negative energy. You know, you can definitely feel it when you are around people that really are not on the same vibrational level that you are on. So I know a lot of times that we can't always choose who we're going to be around, but for the most part in our personal life, you know, we have a big say on who we are going to let in. So we want to make sure that we are again spending the time with the people that really are adding value to our life and the relationships that do have that meaning for us. We also want to make sure that we are not overextending ourselves. So, you know, having that great social well being means that we are not going to every social function that we can find in this world. We are being very selective with our time and we are also honoring our relationship with ourselves by doing that. So, we want to make sure, you know, we have the healthy level of social engagement without really being over committed because that ends up adding a lot of stress in our life as well. Another aspect to this in our modern day is social media and our relationship with it. So in my opinion, social media is something that we really have to keep in check. You know, decide for yourself if it is really something that you feel is necessary to have in your life. And if you feel it really is necessary to have it in your life, you know, keep it at a healthy level. We don't want to be spending our entire day looking at social media because there is a lot of neg negativity that can creep in by doing that, a lot of self-comparison, and you know, it can add to a lot of drama and depression in our life if we are not careful. So we just want to be, you know, realistic about what is an appropriate amount of time to spend on social media and that it is something that is really uplifting to us. So if we are getting on social media and we are tending to feel bad about ourselves or, you know, some things, you know, keep bothering ourselves, we need to really think about if that is a constructive use of our time or maybe that's something we might might want to be putting aside for a little while. So that is the full eight dimensions of well-being. So it's something we just want to keep coming back to time to time and checking in. And it can be something that's pretty informal for you or, you know, for some of my clients, they make it a pretty formal thing. They do it like twice a month. They make a spreadsheet and they evaluate, you know, you know, with a scale of one to 10, how they're doing in each of these categories. But, you know, keep in mind this is something very personal, this is very different and individualized for each person, and that also change is best made in small increments. So don't feel that it's all or nothing. It's not like you have to wake up tomorrow and have everything changed if you are seeing that you're having difficulty in some areas. You know, just see where, you know, where you can make small changes and, you know, improvements and what habits that you can either break or adopt to help you along in this process. So I hope you found this video inspiring and helpful to you. And if you did, please take a moment and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel where we talk about all things having to do with our well-being from our emotional well-being to our emotional intelligence, but personal development as a whole and living our absolute best life. So I look forward to seeing you very soon. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you next time.